Hi everybody, welcome to IVEX Running. I am Coach Rachel and today we have something special for you. We have Lauren Geraldo's 12-3-30 workout for you. So, if you guys are ready, we don't really have to worry about any of the progressions. We're gonna stay where we are pretty much the whole entire workout. But if you wanna know where we are from start to finish during this workout, just look over on this side. We'll have a progression bar showing you where we're at. So if you're ready, find that start button and let's hit it in three, two, one. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna finish at the same spot. You're gonna give me 3.0 on that tread and you're gonna give me 12 on the incline. Oh yeah, 12. I didn't stutter. That's the number. It might not seem so bad at first, but it's gonna start building up. We're gonna start feeling it. So I really want you to take the first few minutes and try to focus and, and settle into your breath, settle into your body. Because once we start picking up that incline, you're gonna feel your body start to tilt back or lean too far in. What we're trying to focus on is holding that core nice and tight squeezing it and not holding on to the handlebars, which is really hard when we're walking on the incline. It's like walking up a really steep mountain for a whole 30 minutes. Well, you guys got it. All right, so I don't know if you guys know, but Lauren Geraldo is a social media influencer and she started doing this workout five days a week. And she ended up losing 30 pounds. She did take some breaks every now and then, but we're not gonna do that today. We're gonna try to go start to finish because you guys can do it. 30 minutes, 3.0, 12 on that incline. We got it, so, <clears throat> like I said, let's just check in with our body really quick. Roll the shoulders down and back. Nice, good deep inhales and exhales, settle into your breath, which is probably the hardest part. Now, if you were in some of my running classes, I was telling, I'm telling you guys that if you come in with a tensed, really stressed out breath, it's gonna go through your whole entire body. It's gonna be a little bit harder for you to breathe. Try to focus inhaling deep, not just through the upper belly, all the way into that lower abdominal. Yep, that lower diaphragm. You can feel it expand. It's gonna relax your body, and I promise you, it's gonna relax your mind and make this workout a little bit easier to handle. <clears throat> I wanna make sure that while we're walking, you know, we're not running, so our arms don't have to be super tight. They don't have to have that little L shape. They can be a little bit more fluid, but you don't want them too laxed. You don't want them hanging too far down. The arm swing is gonna help you keep this incline. Yeah, see, now you're getting into it. I want you to press down with your heels too. And as you press down with your heels, we're driving it into the tread. We're squeezing our glutes. See? It's not gonna get any harder than this, so you don't have to worry about that. The only hard part is up here. Well, that's what you got me for. I'm here to tell you you can do it, you can finish this workout. So if you're new to working out, you're new to walking at all in general, first of all, thank yourself for, for doing it, for meeting you here. You're not gonna be unhappy. Nobody leaves a workout and says, God, I'm so upset that I did that workout. Never happened. Nope. You give yourself the time you give yourself the effort, you're gonna see rewards. <clears throat> but if you're new to walking, just, just know you gotta start somewhere. You're not gonna start off being an Olympic runner, Olympic sprinter. You gotta start walking as me, coming from the Midwest. I mean, fitness wasn't as serious out there as I feel like it is in some of the other places I've lived. So I used to walk all the time, I could never run. I remember you have to, in high school, they have like those running um, tests where you have to run the mile. Oh man, I would die, could barely do it. But I would walk, I would walk all the time. I'd walk to my friend's house, I'd walk to school, even though I could ride the bus, I still wanna ride the bus. I'd walk to school, and I'd, after that, I would start picking up, I'd like run from here to there, mailbox to mailbox, so eventually I could run the mile. So what I'm trying to say is walking is the best thing you can do because it's gonna help prep you for anything else you wanna do in your life. There we go. And then dancing always helps too. You could be one of those people walking down the street doing this. I swear I saw this girl, <clears throat> this older lady walking down the street but she was doing like a full-on Zumba class as she was walking. She was like, that, 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 that. And I was like, I, 
I know exactly what song she's listening to. And then it kind of got me to want to do it. Well, it's all contagious. <sighs> Good news, guys. You're already about five minutes into this workout. How are you feeling? Every now and then hydrate. Don't forget to drink water. Don't forget to dance. Don't forget to smile. And if you guys don't know who Lauren Geraldo is, you can follow her on Instagram, follow her journey. I'm sure her Instagram, her TikTok, her whatever her social media it is, you'll see it. It really does work. We're not just making it up. Let's go. Five minutes in. Try to keep that chin nice and parallel. Good, head nice and high. Remember, the form is different from running to walking. When we're running, we land on the pads of our feet. When we're walking, we go from heel to toe. It's like a slow roll. Rolling heel to toe. Again, squeezing that glute. So think about it. Maybe you go lax for 30 seconds, and then maybe you go 30 seconds, you start flexing your glutes a little bit more as you're walking. Yeah, you feel the difference. And it's mind to the muscle. You think about those muscles that you're working, they're gonna work just a little bit harder because it's that mind-body connection. Good. Keep it going. <sighs> find your focus, find your breath. Keep moving. Here's the thing about walking, super relaxing. You just gotta find that little zone where you peace out. You know, you can't think about the trick, you can't look at the numbers. That starts to play with your head. Just listen to the music. Think about what you're walking towards, what your goals are, where you wanna be. Just think about that. You got 23 minutes left, that's it. Good, keep moving. I always try to get my parents, I text them after I do these workouts. And I'm like, did you walk today? Did you, did you do any exercise? They usually say no. But it's all, everybody's connected, man. You gotta try to push people you love too, not just yourself. So always trying to get everybody to walk. My parents are a little bit older. My dad has some heart issues. I keep telling them, man, this is the thing. You gotta be able to walk. You gotta walk. 30 minutes a day, that's what we're here. 30 minute workout, 30 minutes a day, it's gonna change your life. Not only that, it's just gonna make you happier. Yep, walking, gonna pick up this endorphins. I say, 71 people in, experience a decrease in depression after a walk, 71%. That's incredible right there. That alone, with all the stress we have with, you know, the pandemic going on or work or our kids, if there's a 71% chance you're gonna be happier after a 30 minute walk, you sign me up. Woo. There we go. Again, let's try 10 more seconds. Just try to keep the same pace. Try to squeeze your glutes just a little harder for 30. In three, two, one, squeeze them. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. There we go. We're not changing up our pace. We're not changing up our incline. We're already on the top of this hill. Good, we're just squeezing those glutes a little bit more. Yes, as you walk, squeeze. Give me 15 more seconds, you go back to a nice relaxed form. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Relax those glutes. You see how you feel the release there? It's nice to do that every now and then. It's gonna help sculpt your buns. That's also a good benefit. If you're trying to look nice in your little, in your jeans, I promise you running's gonna help. Walking's gonna help. Whew. Good. Also, we're trying to keep our, kind of like if you've ever done Pilates, how like to take that pelvic tilt. 
We're not tilting in our pelvis, but we're kind of flexing our lower abdominals to keep the spine nice and straight. Because like I said, as we're walking on this incline, the hard part is trying not to hold on to the handlebars because it's so steep. Once we hold on to the handlebars, we're eliminating that full body workout. We're just changing it up to our upper body. We want to take that out because this isn't doing all the work that we need to be doing. This is the work. You are strong enough. Trust me, you can hold your body up. We got 20 more minutes. That's it. Keep moving. Breathe here, nice big inhale. Exhale, let it go. Good. So I know the pace, it might not be the fastest pace that you've ever walked, but considering you're on that incline, trust me, you are working. So, if you don't feel it yet, there's gonna be a moment where you're like, oh man, okay, I'm starting to feel this. If you're not feeling it already, I already feel it. Keep going. <sighs> nice pump, slow pump in those arms. Mm -hmm. Again, hydrate when you need to. This is a good one. You can be talented enough to walk and drink at the same time. I can handle that. Running and drinking, I don't know. That is definitely, I definitely need practice with. Oh, you guys got it. Also, did you guys know that just when you walk, not only does it help boost your endorphins and make you happier, but it also increases your productivity, helps you be more productive during the day. I 100% will say that that is exactly true. Every time I come from a run or I come from a walk, the first thing I do is I go into my house and I just start doing everything. I start cleaning dishes, laundry, like putting things away, like organizing things. I'm on like full 120% mode, getting stuff done. I swear, just do it. Just do it for a week straight. Go for a walk, come home. You don't want to sit down right away. You want to just like get stuff done. It's gonna help, I promise you. You might not even notice it right off the bat, but like after you sit down, you, you get home, you go for your walk, you do a bunch of stuff, then you sit down, and you're like, oh my God, she was really right. I really am more productive. And it sets you up like that. And every day it gets a little bit longer, a little bit longer, a little bit longer. Honestly, being stagnant is so contagious. If you're a couch potato, you sit on the couch, it is really hard to get off that couch. And as soon as you get off the couch, it's like somehow it's like magnetically pulling you right back towards it. Like all you wanna do is get back to it. You gotta like train yourself to get up and move. And then once you do that, your body, it becomes addicted to wanting that movement. <clears throat> nope, no couch potatoes on Ibex running. We're training people here to be the best versions of themselves. Let's go. We're 13 minutes into this workout. I do math right now, but uh, 17 minutes? Yeah, there we go, 17 minutes left. <sighs> Quick math is in my, my go-to, you know? All right, 30 more seconds. Let's try squeezing those glutes for another 30. Just to give ourselves something else to think about. <clears throat> Breathe there. Breathe out. Get ready. Squeeze those buttons. In six, five, four, three, two. Let's go. Squeeze and flex, squeeze and flex. I don't know if you could tell on my face, but I am squeezing very hard. Squeeze and flex. There we go. Woo! 15 more seconds, squeeze a little harder. There we go, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, relax those glutes. How's that feel? You feel the release, right? Yeah. You can keep doing it more and more. I'm just saying, throw it in every now and then. Don't forget to squeeze that core too. You do the same thing with the abs. Squeeze those abs nice and tight. Like I said, it's that mind-body connection. It's gonna get that body to move. You think about flexing those abs, you are flexing those abs. <sighs> Keep breathing. You guys, 
guess what? You're halfway through the workout. Halfway through the workout. Hey, voice of an angel, I was told. Just kidding. <clears throat> All right. I want you guys, after you're done with this workout, write it down on a piece of paper. And then, tomorrow meet me back here. Write that down and get on a piece of paper. Why? I think I've said it before in my other runs. Writing it down creates like a pattern in your brain. I'm just gonna make you want to keep adding to it. Once you visually see what you've done, you wanna keep going, right? It's like, I did all this. Now what else? Now what else? So I was listening to a podcast and I was saying, it's about goal setting, setting goals. So sometimes it's hard to set goals and then to keep them. So, you know, like I wanna, I'm training for a marathon. That is a very, very intense goal. It's, it's requiring me a lot of training and it's not like something I can just do right off that. I have to commit. I have to show up consistently or I'm never gonna hit that goal. I can't just go out and run 26 miles. Never gonna happen. So the podcast was saying reduce Reduce it down to the ridiculous. And so what that means is make it so simple that you got it. And then keep doing that over and over again to that your ridiculously small goal that you set becomes just a little bit bigger. So it could be something like 30 second plank. Let's just keep it fitness based. 30 second plank every day. Really small, everybody can do that. Everybody has 30 seconds. And you do that for a month. And then after that month, you're like, I've hit it consistently for 30 days. It's not about what you do. It's about when you show up for yourself. It's about being consistent. You show up for yourself for 30 days, 30 seconds. Guess what? After that 30 days, those 30 seconds, you're gonna be like, what's next? Maybe I try a minute now. Then after you do that, you keep increasing it until you've gotten where you wanted to be. You've set those goals and then become it becomes like, like I said, it becomes your thought process after that. <sighs> there we go. That's it. That's all I had to say about the matter. Keep working. Yep, what did I say? It's about not giving up. So you run when you can. You walk when you have to. Crawl if you must, but we never quit. We don't quit on this tread, right? We don't quit on ourselves. That's the worst feeling. That's the worst thing you could do, is let that little doubt in your head tell you you want to stop, tell you you want to slow down. That, that little person, that little thing in your head, he doesn't need to exist anymore. You know, boop, right off the shoulder. Woo! You guys are getting closer to the finish line. How about you give me a little bit more ab squeeze, glute squeeze, in five. In four, in three, two, keep it tight now. Keep it tight. Mm -hmm. How's that incline feel? Starting to feel it? It's funny, cause that little, not little, that incline, whoo, that's what you're feeling right here. That's work. Imagine just walking straight up a mountain for 30 minutes straight. That's basically where we're going with this. Keep squeezing. Give me 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, go relax. Relax those glutes. Keep moving, keep walking. I'll let you have the next minute. I'll shut my mouth for a minute, if I can. I want to talk. Keep going, guys. All right, keep moving, guys. Guess what? 11 minutes left, that's it. Woo, more than halfway there. Got about 10 minutes plus. Just, I like doing that because if anything like 11 sounds a little bit more aggressive than if I just said 10 plus, because you're like, oh, only 10? 10 minutes. I'll tell you guys this time, talking about starting from the beginning. I was staying with my parents for the summer. It was a couple years ago. 
And <clears throat> some, one of my friends from high school called me and was like, hey, you wanna go run a 10 mile tough mutter? I never ran before in my life. I was like just into weightlifting and thing maybe some yoga at the time. Couldn't run to save my life. And so my, my friend happened to be like a ridiculously good runner and ran 10 miles straight. Oh my God. I thought I was gonna die the whole entire time. But I just kept telling myself in my head, wasn't well, saying it out loud, you got this, you are strong, you can do this, keep moving, don't stop. I swear I said that in my head for at least eight miles straight. And I just, I just kept going. I just kept moving. They're as nice because there's little breaks during those tough motors, but they're like little mile increments. And if you're not into running, going from zero to 10 miles, oh my God. I couldn't walk the next day. I like was rolling on the grass to get to the door and stuff. I was like, I can't walk. But it was definitely worth it. And what I'm saying is just, you don't, you don't give up. You don't tell yourself you don't set those negative things into your head. You just keep always, always with the positive. Your body feeds off of that. You feed it the positivity and then it just recuperates and then it keeps going. Keep pushing. Nine minutes left. Okay, I'm feeling this one. <clears throat> Good, recheck, body scan one more time because we're coming into the home stretch here. Coming into the home stretch. So notice if you're leaning back, notice if you're leaning forward, stand up tall. Top of your head goes up to the ceiling. I forget how tall I am sometimes. Good, squeeze that core. Nice slight L shape into that throat. Don't look too far up. Don't look down at the numbers either. I have a problem when I get tired, I start looking up. And, that, and I said this before, it actually starts closing up. You're the way you can breathe in and bring oxygen into your, into your throat. So nice little L shape into the throat right there. Good. You got it, guys. If you're a mom, too, take those kids, put them in the stroller, go for a walk. I used to, I have two kids, so I used to take them to the park with me. I would wake up. The park was like a good two miles away if you have this available to you. Not always available to everybody. Put them in the stroller, just walk. Walk to the park, let them play for like a half hour, pack a lunch, and then walk back. I swear, I promise you, I feel like I lost all my baby weight like that. I just walked every single day. Granted, it was in the summertime and it was nice, it's hopefully it's not like snowy or, or and stuff, but you pack them babies up. They make all that stuff now weatherproof. So. <clears throat> I'll do like some lunges too. I was like that mom. I always try to get my kids to walk with me now. I don't know, but they, they do this thing. We all be walking in a straight line and then they just start morphing into like a triangle and walk right into you. If you have kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you're like, there is a straight line. Like this, it's forward. It's not in here. Call them the leaners. They lean right into you. I like it because they want to be close. And then they're like, you end up walking on your feet, but it's funny. Oh yeah, guys, guess what? Six minutes. Keep moving. The best thing about walking on an incline helps bring that belly fat just a little bit more than if you were just walking on a flat road. You're using that core to constantly hold yourself up, pull those legs up on that incline. The belly fat brings just a little bit more. You guys wanna give me one more glute squeeze? One more ab squeeze, five, four, three, two, squeeze it out. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. 
I like it because it's going to the beat of the song. Keep squeezing. Fifteen seconds. Ten, nine, eight. Let's go. Five, four, three, two. Relax. Keep walking. You got five minutes left. Now, you see, you could keep doing this workout. Try it. Was she five days a week? She did it five days a week, okay? Maybe dedicate, if this is how you're gonna start your workout journey, dedicate a full month. You don't have to go and do crazy things right off the bat. You have to let your body absorb what you're doing for it. You have to go in easy. If you, were, if you hadn't worked out at all, trust me, this is more than enough. But stay consistent. Don't do this once a week and then expect to get results. Keep doing this workout three times, two, three, four, five times is ideal. 30 days, try it. Set that goal. You can set that goal, what I say, reduce it to the ridiculous. 30, I mean, 30 days is not a ridiculous goal set, but you got it. Once it starts feeling a little easy, you don't have to change up the speed either. You could always take two water bottles and just hold onto the water bottles. One, as you drink, it's getting a little lighter, so as you go through that workout, it's getting a little easier. But it doesn't have to be, I think people always freak themselves out, like they have to push way too hard and it always has to be harder. It doesn't. Just keep showing up. Like I said, it's about being consistent. The process of progress. Just a little bit more, you know? The little water bottles were those 16 ounces. So a pound, pound each, and there you go. And you're hydrating while you drink them because you, you don't want to carry them anymore, but you are you're carrying them in your body. Oh. It's science, you know? All right, guys, three minutes left. You got it. Coming up, you can see the top of this hill now. Visualize it. It's only three minutes away. Imagine what we're gonna see when we get to the top of this hill. What's waiting up there for us? Picture it now, you guys know. Set that as your goal. Picture whatever it is you want there. Don't close your eyes, because that's not the best idea on a trail. <laughs> Picture what you want at the top of the hill. Two and a half minutes, and then we're there. You can dance up that hill too. I love this workout. You do this with a friend, like I said. Do your mom, your dad, your kids, your dog. I'm pretty sure all the dogs can make this one. I've seen somebody walk their cat though. I don't know how you get your cat to walk. But if you can get your cat to walk up a hill for 30 and not leave you stranded, also talent right there. You guys coming up? If you ever want me, like, like me on the tread, I'll be like, oh, I got two minutes to the last minute, and then there's 30 seconds, and then I'm done. I always break it in half. Like somehow breaking it down is gonna make it faster. You got 90 seconds left. That's 30 seconds three times. That's all I'm saying. Come on. I'm just getting excited when I get to say we're at the last minute. Holding off for it. Coming up to the last minute in three, two, one, 60 seconds. You guys crushed it. Hard or easy, whatever it is, the point is that you finished. Keep squeezing it to the end. There, we're like, here's the top of the hill. We're just right here. Let's get it, 45 seconds. Squeeze those glutes, squeeze that core, pump those arms just a little bit more. 30 seconds. We got it, guys. 
I can't thank you enough for meeting me here in your treadmill, giving me everything you got start to finish. 30 minutes, Lauren Geraldo's 12-3-30 workout. Again, you don't have to keep doing the different things. Try this, try this 30 days, 30 days straight for 30 minutes. See what it does for you. Go ahead, hit that stop button or take that incline down in four, three, two, woo. Remember guys, this is Ibex Running. I'm Coach Rachel. I will meet you on your tread next time. Thank you guys for coming. Have a wonderful day.